word from the Lord. Just for a few moments, we're going to talk um, from a subject that I like. Just a follower. In Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 1 and 2, uh, and it reads like this. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also has loved us, and has given himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling Savior. But verse 1 says, be ye followers. I, just a follower. Just a, just a follower. When we start looking and thinking about the word follower, we always think about being behind someone or someone leading us. Just a follower. When I, when I looked at Webster and, and started thinking about the word follower, what's, what's, what's a follower? Where Webster said it's, it's one who comes after an order. In other words, he's behind, but there is an order to the following. And then it's to maintain an awareness while you're following you maintain awareness. When you're following Jesus, you're not just behind it, but you're maintaining an awareness. I'm just a follower. I think there are three things here. Now, I just want to make three points, and, and, and I'll let you go here. The first one is, is that, that if you want to follow Jesus, you're going to have to uh, step where he steps. Step where Jesus steps. Being a follower, you have to be aware enough uh, uh, when, you, when you're behind someone, when they make a step, that you're able to step exactly where they step. When we're following Jesus a lot of times, I, I think we get so, so, so loose and so common until we're, I, I'm behind the master, so I'm following it. No, to, to be a follower simply means that you're able to step where Jesus stepped. In other words, if he steps to the left, you step to the left. If he steps a little farther, you step a little farther. So to be a follower, number one, step where Jesus steps. Number two, turn when Jesus turns. One of the things I, I believe that, that as we go and, 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 and the world gets real comfortable, turn where Jesus turns. Sometimes we get so uh, complacent that, you know, I've been going this way such a long time, and I've been doing this such a long time, and I feel like it's all right. But when we study the Bible, if we find out something is not right or we've been doing something wrong, we have to turn where Jesus turns. We have to turn where the Bible turns. As we study and as we grow and as we learn, uh, we have to do better because we know better now. In other words, when Jesus makes a turn, when the Bible makes a turn, we have to turn where Jesus turns. If you don't, you'll find yourself on the wrong route. Going down the wrong road. So you have to be careful. You have to be aware. You have to turn where Jesus turned. Then you have to follow his path. Follow the path of God. Now, now, when we start talking about following the path, Jesus, uh, <laughs> he's the one. He's the one that we follow. And you're absolutely right. But we have to follow the path that he lays. And, and I like what the psalmist says in, in 23 and 3. Because it says, he leadeth me in the path. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. God has a path for us to follow. So we've got to follow the path if we are a good follower. And I know a good follower means that you have to submit yourself to the will of the leader. Because where he goes, I'll follow. You have to submit yourself and you have to take out where you want to go. You have to take out my thoughts and my direction. You have to completely submit yourself to him to be a follower. And if you are a follower of God, I guarantee he'll always lead you in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Y'all be blessed.